Dreams. Hopes. Questions. We get it. You're wondering what path is right for you. Where you'll fit in. Find purpose. How to best prepare for your career. And right now, even if you may have more questions than answers, there's a place waiting for you. Here. A place of preparation, discovery, and purpose. Where life-changing experiences take you beyond the classroom, to internships, on mission trips, to our marine biology station, or to study abroad. Where opportunities for leading, learning, serving, and exploring have your name on them and offer some of the best ingredients for a life well lived. Studying here will be rigorous. It will change you, challenge you, and give you the vital skills needed to succeed in life and excel in your career. An education here will also plug you in to our impressive network of accomplished alumni who can connect you to opportunities worldwide. In the grand beauty of the Pacific Northwest, you'll find your footing and forge friendships on a campus where teachers and staff know your name and are here to help you succeed. This is a place where people will pray with you, dream with you, and see the possibilities in you. Maybe even before you see them in yourself. A place where you can find a future God made for you. Maybe you know exactly what you want to study, and maybe you're just not sure yet. Either way, surrounding yourself with people striving for excellence, impact, and lives of faith could be the most important decision you make right now. So go ahead, put yourself on the path of discovery here, where opportunities are everywhere and connections are made for life and life eternal. Hello and welcome. I hope you enjoyed watching one of my favorite videos about Walla Walla University, which I believe does a great job of representing who we are as a campus. My name is Trevor Congleton, and I'm the Associate Vice President for Marketing and Enrollment Services. As you know, we are here today to talk about how families and students utilize financial aid in order to help pay for college. Today's presentation has been designed to help you understand the financial aid process and how financial aid can help you become a part of the Walla Walla University family. One of the best parts of my job is watching our students become a part of that family as they discover their career paths and develop their characters. While they're here, they're prepared not only for successful careers, but are prepared for a life of learning, a life of service to others, and most importantly, a life of faith in God. We know that right now, one of the biggest questions you're facing is how to pay for college. And we wanna help address all of your questions in this presentation because the Walla Walla University experience is one of a kind and we believe that it is definitely worth the investment. Not only do our students receive a top-notch education, they spend their college years in an environment that is conducive to a Christian lifestyle and have many intentional opportunities to engage in service to others. We provide a supportive, faith-friendly environment for our students as they begin to stand on their own in their spiritual journey. One of the ways we support our students spiritually, emotionally, and academically is by matching all of our incoming freshmen with mentors. These are Christian individuals who share Walla Walla University's values and goals and who meet with them regularly to check in to see how things are going and to help guide them through that first year away from home. So let's get to the topic at hand today, how to pay for college. To help guide us in the discussion, I've asked Carrie Butler, one of the financial aid counselors in our student financial services office, and Mindy Coleman, our guest relations coordinator, to join us. At any time during this presentation, if you have a question, you can ask it by typing it in the chat box. We will get to all of your questions at the end of this presentation, which should take us about 30 minutes. If you'd like to download the slides that we'll be covering this presentation, you can download them through the link in the panel on the right side of the screen. 
Karen Mindy, let me turn it over to you and let's get started. Hi everyone. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk with you about the financial aid process. Okay, Carrie, let's start at the very beginning. How much does it cost to attend Walla Walla University? The figures you see on the screen are this year's expenses for a full-time student. In addition to the tuition, housing, and food, there are variable expenses for things like books and miscellaneous expenses. You may have seen some news stories on some state universities increasing their tuition significantly. We expect next year's tuition increase to be around 2 to 3 percent. Surprisingly, when you factor in all expenses, including housing and food, as well as the great scholarship program we have at Walla Walla University, it can actually cost less than other four-year colleges. We've also calculated that for most students, it's less out-of-pocket cost to go four years to Walla Walla U than to start at a community college and transfer to WWU later. There are several factors that play a role here. We have lower housing and cafeteria costs. We have a great scholarship program, which we will talk about in a few minutes. Washington State has a great need grant program for its residents, and Washington State has one of the highest minimum wage rates in the US. So our students are able to earn more money while they're here. We also have a great on-campus work program, and we've been proactive in encouraging off-campus employers to hire our students. So there are lots of opportunities for you to find work. The majority of our students have a job while they're here in school and most work on campus. This benefits students both financially and academically. We've studied the GPAs of our students who work on campus, work off campus, and don't work at all. Those who work on campus have a slightly higher GPA than the rest. Because of Washington State's higher than average minimum wage laws, we estimate that students working 15 hours a week will earn about 3,000 more per school year than a student working the same number of hours in a state that only pays the federal minimum wage. When you come to visit our campus, you will have an opportunity to talk with potential employers and learn more about student employment and what positions might be available for you. A lot of our new students find their job during Jumpstart or the first week of classes. So if you get to September and you don't have a job, don't panic, it's totally normal. Walla University, in compliance with the state of Washington, has a sick pay benefit that most schools do not provide. You will accrue 1.6 hours of sick time for every 40 hours you work. If you are sick, we know it's important for you not to go to work. In addition to student employment, there is financial aid available to help students and parents pay for college. This can include grants, scholarships, and loans. Grants are usually awarded based on financial need and do not have to be repaid. Scholarships are usually awarded based on achievement or criteria other than need and also do not have to be repaid. Loans are low interest and are offered either through Walla Walla University or the federal government. We also expect most of our students will work while they're in school and contribute six to 8,000 toward their college expenses from both their school year earnings and summer savings. Last year, we processed more than $41 million of financial aid. That made our average award more than $28,000 per student, and we awarded aid to 95% of our students. Carrie, would you walk us through the steps to apply for aid? The first step for U.S. citizens is to apply for an FSA ID from the federal government. Students, you're going to need one. Parents, if you applied for one before, maybe for another child, you won't need a new one. But if you don't already have one, you'll need to apply. The easiest place to apply for an FSA ID is at fafsa.gov. That's F-A-F-S-A dot G-O-V. So to be clear, students, you will have your own FSA ID and parents, you will have your own FSA ID. Each individual has a unique ID and will use that same FSA ID each year for signing the FAFSA. You may also use it for signing certain federal documents. Parents, you will have one FSA ID. You will use that same ID each year for all of your children. Tax information will be required for the FAFSA, so be sure to file taxes for 2022 if you haven't already done that. 
The second step is to complete the free application for student aid, which is known as the FAFSA. Every school in the United States uses the same application. Note the word free. If you're asked to pay, don't use the site. Make sure you're on a free website. Students, when filling out your portion of the FAFSA, be sure to include Walla Walla University's school code, which is 003799. The FAFSA form is a federal process that qualifies students for institutional, federal, and state financial aid by collecting demographic and financial information about both the student and contributing family members. Be aware that it will no longer be possible to enter information manually on the FAFSA and permission will be required for the FAFSA to retrieve tax information directly from the IRS. Refusing to give permission will automatically disqualify a student from receiving federal and Washington state financial aid. The application process is limited to U.S. citizens or permanent residents of the United States. The FSA ID you signed up for in step one will be used to sign the FAFSA form. Now for step three. Some schools, and Walla Walla University is one of those schools, also require their own institutional financial aid application to be submitted. Our institutional financial aid application is available on the Walla Walla University website, and the form only takes about five minutes to complete. Once a student has been accepted as a Walla Walla University student, an e-version of this form will become available. Student Financial Services will provide students their official personalized financial plan once these three items are completed. Number one, acceptance to Walla Walla University. Number two, acceptable FAFSA results have been received by Walla Walla U. And number three, Walla Walla U financial aid application is completed. A lot of students have already applied for next school year. Our recruitment team has been visiting academies in the Northwest as well as academies across the United States and encouraging students to apply. However, if you or your student has not yet applied, they can do so at apply.wallawalla.edu where they will create an application account and submit their application electronically to us. Once a student has applied, they will need to send us a copy of their academic transcript in order for us to make an admissions decision. Many colleges and universities have a deadline for applying for aid. At Walla University, students need to apply for financial aid by April 30 to qualify for maximum aid. Since it takes a few days for the federal government to process the FAFSA, I do not recommend waiting until April 25 to start the process in the hopes that it will be done by April 30. While April 30 is the priority deadline, you really should start the process now. The sooner you complete the paperwork, the more aid may be available to you. Remember, students must be accepted before aid can be calculated. We award merit scholarships to high school students who are coming in with a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or higher. The higher their GPA, the larger their scholarship. This is not based on your final high school transcript. It is based on the most recent transcript at the time they are admitted. So it can be based on the student's sixth semester transcript if they apply for admissions at the end of their junior year in high school. They are locked in for that amount and it will not drop below that award. However, if their high school GPA improves after that, we will be more than happy to increase their scholarship to the next level they're eligible for as long as we have an updated transcript. It is definitely in the interest of the student and their family to get accepted early and get their scholarships locked in. Request a final transcript as soon as your school has it available. We also look at the student's ACT and SAT test scores. Whichever gives them the highest scholarship, their GPA, their ACT test, or their SAT test, that's the scholarship they receive. If the student's permanent residence is outside of Oregon or Washington, we will also give them a $2,500 out-of-area grant. In addition, we like to reward students who have been in leadership positions their junior or senior year in high school. We can award up to $1,500 based on those leadership positions. When the student applies for admissions to Walla University, they can tell us each leadership position they've held. If they take an additional leadership office after they apply, they just need to update us and we can increase the scholarship up to that maximum of $1,500. So we're talking about up to $70,000 over four years for a student receiving our top merit scholarship. 
and the $2,500 out of area grant, and the maximum leadership award. This is equivalent of getting over one and a half years of expenses covered for free. We also have scholarships for National Merit students. To qualify for the National Merit Scholarships, students take a test in October or early November of their junior year in high school. They get one chance to take the test. You can check with your high school or academy to see if your student took the test. A National Merit Commended student will be eligible for 1,000 each year in addition to our Academic Achievement Scholarships. A semifinalist is eligible for an additional $1,500 each year. A finalist will get full tuition their first two years and half tuition their second two years with us. This would be in place of the Academic Achievement Scholarship. We expect great things from our National Merit students, so we ask them to maintain a 3.8 GPA to renew this scholarship each year. One thing to note about these scholarships for entering freshmen is that if you go to another school first and then decide to come to Walla Walla University, even if you have earned as little as one credit, other than during summer session, you are now considered a transfer student and no longer eligible for freshman scholarships. Each year we have several students transfer to Walla Walla University after attending another university fall quarter. We love having these students join our Walla Walla University family, but some of them lost more than $40,000 in scholarships because they are no longer considered first-time freshmen. We want students to start with us and stay with us so we are very upfront about our scholarship program. Students who attend another college or university before or after starting school at Walla Walla U, other than summer session, will forfeit their WWU freshman scholarships. Let's talk about need-based aid at Walla Walla U. When you fill out the FAFSA, you will be applying for several programs of aid. Let's look first at the grants. The maximum federal Pell Grant program this year is over $7,000 per year. We don't know if this is changing for next year yet. The NPUC grant, which is funded by the annual offering for Walla Walla University, can give a student up to $900. However, the student must apply by April 30th to be eligible for this grant. Depending on the student's financial need and other resources, the Walla Walla University grant can be several thousand dollars. Our high financial need Pell eligible students can receive up to $2,400 on a federal supplemental educational opportunity grant. There are a limited number of these awards, so it's important to apply early. Eligible students who are residents of Washington State may also qualify for up to approximately $10,000 in a Washington grant. Washington State has been increasing the number of students eligible for this grant, and DACA students are eligible. The College Bound Scholarship is for Washington State residents who signed a pledge in the 7th or 8th grade to graduate from high school or homeschool program with at least a 2.0 GPA, not to be convicted of a felony, and to go to college in Washington State. It does have a financial need component, and this can be over $6,000 a year. No student is eligible for all of these programs, but I want students and parents to realize that there is a lot of financial aid available to students. There are also loan programs available. The university loan can be up to $3,600 for a freshman. Freshmen can borrow up to $5,500 on the Federal Direct Loan Program. It's called direct because you're borrowing directly from the federal government. The government may pay some of the interest on the loan while the student is in school, depending on the FAFSA information. Just about everyone who is eligible to fill out the FAFSA is eligible for the direct loan. When Bill Gates' kids started college, they were eligible to take out the direct loan, although they probably were not eligible for the interest subsidy. For additional financial aid, there is a Parent PLUS loan that parents can take out. They can borrow the difference between the cost of attendance and the financial aid the student receives. There's no limit to how much a parent can borrow over their lifetime. The loan is set up on a 10-year repayment plan and interest and loan fees do apply. For the direct and plus loans, the government does deduct a loan processing fee before they send the money to Walla Walla University. It's also important to remember that students must meet student academic progress standards to continue to receive federal and state financial aid. While we encourage students to avoid loans if they can, 
don't let the news stories about student loans scare you. Most of these stories you hear are extreme cases rather than a typical student loan. In June, almost 40% of our graduating seniors had no student loan debt. Of the students who took out loans, the average senior left with about $35,700 in loans, which is actually less than a few years ago when more students were borrowing and our average loan was over $37,000. Our students are borrowing less than the national average. Student loans are really an investment in yourself. Having a degree gives you higher earning potential. As we saw in the last two recessions, people with a college degree had a much lower unemployment rate. You can tell that Walla Walla U students are able to manage their student loans by looking at our default rates. When you compare our students' default rates with the national average, you will see our graduates are able to pay back their loans. This shows that most of our students are taking out a manageable student loan debt load. For our direct and Perkins loans, our default rate is about 17% of the national average, and we are proud of the fact that our students take responsibility for repaying their loans. As I also mentioned, a low default rate is an indicator that our students are borrowing a reasonable and affordable amount when compared to their future earnings. When you compare the cost of different schools, you want to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Make sure you look at total cost and not just tuition. Add in key items like the school's required fees. Housing and cafeteria costs vary widely and so do other fees. Our housing and cafeteria costs have consistently been lower than most private schools and considerably lower than state schools. Also, don't forget to calculate the cost of travel for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and spring breaks. As we said before, it's our financial aid program that can make the difference in the affordability of a Christian education. So when you're looking at the total cost of each school, subtract the amount of aid you receive at each institution to see the out-of-pocket expense for your family. Carrie, do you have any other resources you can recommend as students and their parents start looking at how to pay for college? Yes, now is the best time to apply for scholarships for next year. When searching for outside scholarships, the first thing I recommend you do is make a list of the scholarships you find. Record when the application is usually available and what the deadline is. How much is the scholarship? Are there any requirements such as an essay? Where did you find the information such as a website address? Then keep checking that list to make sure you meet those deadlines. I encourage people to talk to your local public high school guidance counselor. When people create scholarships, they usually notify the public schools, but they forget to notify private schools. So your academy may not know about some scholarships through no fault of their own. Ask other places that might know about scholarships. Check with your local chamber of commerce to see if there are any local scholarships. If a local bank has a trust department, ask there. Check your community foundations. The best scholarships to apply for are the ones that have a limited pool of applicants. For example, a local electrical co-op in the Walla Walla Valley gives three scholarships each year for $1,000 to $1,500, but you have to be a customer to be eligible to apply. So a small pool of applicants makes it more likely for the applicants to get the scholarship. Some credit unions give scholarships just to members and children of members. Again, a small pool of applicants increases your chances of winning. And don't just go after the big dollar amounts. A lot of people don't apply for the smaller scholarships, so that increases your odds of getting the scholarship. We had a student who ended up working in student financial services who came her freshman year with seven outside scholarships that totaled $3,700. The largest was 1,000, most were around 500, but $3,700 is a nice bonus. Another one of our student workers mentioned that his friends laughed at him for applying for a $500 scholarship. He said he spent two hours on the application and won the scholarship, and that $250 an hour wasn't bad wages. The best free website we have found for scholarship searches is fastweb.com. Definitely don't pay for a scholarship search. Almost all paid scholarship searches are fraud or they give you the same information you would receive from a free scholarship search. Google is a good source to find discipline-specific scholarships. 
if you have a unique skill or interest, there may be a special scholarship just for you. Also, Google things like your city and state with the word scholarships or with your county and state and the word scholarships. On the scholarship page on our website, you'll see a section dedicated to outside scholarships. We also have a list just for Washington State residents and links to other scholarship searches. For example, there's a scholarship for our Washington State residents who are pursuing a degree in science, technology, engineering, math, or healthcare, including nursing. Over four years, this could be worth $17,500. There's also a great scholarship database for the state of Oregon. Don't forget to consider other sources that may be able to contribute as well. Can your home church help? If the student shows financial need according to the federal formula, Walla Walla University is willing to match up to 3,000 of a home church's donation. It needs to be money coming from the church congregation and not the parents or grandparents donating the money hoping to get a match. Summer work or savings. Some students save four or $5,000 from their summer work. How about other relatives? Maybe grandparents or an aunt or uncle want to help. We believe that Christian education is one of the most valuable investments you can make. It challenges students academically, connects them socially, prepares them for a successful career, and strengthens them spiritually, all within a supportive community of faith. We work hard to make Christian education accessible and affordable, and God comes through time and time again to help us make that possible. At the bottom of the slide is a link to a web page that brings together useful information on paying for college. There are some calculations there as well as lots of helpful resources. We encourage students to visit Walla Walla University, and you can bring your parents with you. We provide a campus tour that's fun and informative, led by one of our students or staff. You'll have a chance to meet with professors in your chosen department, see people in admissions and student financial services, and talk with someone about student employment. We provide free transportation from the Walla Walla and Pasco airports, and we'll also give you up to three nights of lodging and meals while you're here. We'll reimburse half of your travel expenses up to $350. And if you enroll as a student at Walla Walla University, you can have the other half, up to $350, applied to your school bill during the first quarter of your enrollment. If an in-person visit won't work for you, consider joining us for a virtual visit. Your virtual visit is tailored to you and your needs and can include most of what we do in person just from the comfort of your own home. All we ask is that you give us at least two weeks notice to get everything set up for you in advance. You can schedule either an in-person or online visit online at wallawalla.edu forward slash visit or by giving our office a call. Parents, we want to make sure you have the most current information for you so that we can stay in touch with you and answer your questions. Once students are accepted to Walla Walla University, the student will be able to log in to MyWWU, which is our student information system. Make sure they check the to-do list on that list, students will see two or three items waiting. Click on each one and it will give you instructions how to complete the task. If you have questions on how to log in or how to complete a task, contact our help desk at 509-527-2317. Students, first, you'll want to make sure you and your parents' contact information is correct, especially the student cell phone number and student and parent email addresses. We promise not to spam you with emails or texts. We just want to keep you in the loop with important reminders and deadlines. Second, you'll want to give us permission to send automated text messages to your cell phone. We won't text frequently. We just want to be sure you don't miss a critical deadline. You may have already done this on your application, and if so, we won't ask you again. Third, you'll want to set your parents' permissions so we know who we should and who we should not talk to. Students, when you get to college, you are in control of your information. We won't share your grades or discuss your financial account with your parents unless you provide permission. Parents, we want your email on file so that you can receive our parent newsletter. It contains information to help you know what your students should be doing at each stage of the enrollment process 
and other helpful information like tips from other parents who have gone through this process. We also like to email parents about tasks that need to be taken care of if the student didn't take care of them already. Trevor, before you open this up for questions, will you go over the list of dates that students and parents should keep in mind as they approach the first day of college? I'd be happy to, Wendy. As Carrie mentioned earlier, an important reminder before I talk about the dates is that if you haven't already done your taxes for 2022, you want to make sure you file those now. Uh, then you're going to set up your FSA ID and get started filling out the FAFSA at FAFSA.gov. Again, that's FAFSA.gov. In a moment, Carrie will share information about developments with the FAFSA and walk us through how to use WWU's uh, net price calculator. Okay. First on the list of important dates is our two university days planned for in the spring, one in March and one in April for you and your student to come check out our campus. During our U days events, you'd be able to talk to teachers, meet other students and see what life would be like as a student at WWU. You'd be able to tour campus, attend classes, participate in some uh, social events that we plan just for you, uh, win prizes and more. This is a great time for students to learn about our individual, individualized and comprehensive financial aid program. If you or your student attend a North Pacific Union Conference Academy, um, they'll be joining us for our April U Days event uh, that their school will be sponsoring them for. Um, but if you're outside of the North Pacific Union Conference Academies, you can sign up for either of the U Days, um, whichever one fits into your schedule the best. Our April one tends to be about 400 students, and that's like I said, the NPUC Academy students, seniors. And the March one is closer to about 200 students, and that's um, largely from California and other places, a lot of onesies and twosies. So if you're in that kind of category, I'd probably recommend that one over the April since the April ones have like students coming that are like 30, 40 kids in a class. Uh, March U Days registration closes on February 15th and our April U Days registration closes on March 15th. Um, so if you'd like to come to one of those, just head over to wallawalla.edu forward slash U, the letter U, uh, days, D-A-Y-S, and leave us your contact information and we'd love to have you join us. Okay, some other important dates to keep in mind as you plan for next year. April 30th is our priority deadline for financial aid. That's also the deadline for our early bird payment of a student's enrollment fee. Uh, the enrollment fee is $200 and it is non-refundable. It basically tells us that you or your student plan to be here. If you pay that by April 30th and enroll for the following fall quarter, you'll get $100 credited back to the student's account. Uh, once you've paid the enrollment fee, uh, you'll be able to be placed in classes and reserve your room in the residence hall once they've opened for next year's freshman students. Uh, we encourage you to pay it as soon as you're accepted and feel comfortable with your financial aid package and know for sure that you want to be at WWU in the fall. Also, be sure to apply for financial aid early enough so that you'll have received your financial aid award letter and can make an informed decision quite a bit for that April 30th deadline. Next on the calendar is Jumpstart, which begins on September 22nd. Uh, this is a super important week of orientation for new students and it helps them get acquainted with campus and it's required for all new students. Uh, they have a lot of fun with that one, make a lot of friends, meet a lot of people. And then uh, by Wednesday, September 25th, you should have paid your down payment, completed any necessary paperwork for student loans and have signed your financial clearance online. As we get close to that date, you'll be hearing from Student Financial Services on what you need to do or things that you have left to accomplish. And then on Monday, September 30th, 2024, you begin your college education at Walla Walla University. On the screen now are some important phone numbers for how to reach us. Jot these down or download the PDF of this presentation and give us a car call. We're here to help you make a Walla University education a reality. Um, probably the most important number that you can jot down out of all those is that 800-541-8900 number. Um, if you call that one, we can always direct you to the other ones uh, if you need to, but feel free to jot them all down if you're like, oh, I really want to talk to student employment, say, or specifically about classes. Um, so again, uh, that's that 800-541-8900 number, and we can always send you to the other ones if you need it. Um, now that you've got some important numbers, I'd like to invite Carrie Butler to join me for a few questions before we close out the presentation. Uh, Carrie, the FAFSA has undergone changes recently. Do you have any updates to share with um, the people that are on uh, this presentation? Yes, I do. So as many of you are aware, the FAFSA has gone through some major overhaul, uh, gone through a major overhaul uh, due, the, due to the FAFSA Simplification Act. It is notably shorter uh, now, and it became available uh, in December 
uh, December 31st to be precise, and that's almost three months later than usual. Students and parents can access the FAFSA now, but it's going through a soft launch, which means that you'll be able to um, access it, but maybe not all the time. Um, the FAFSA allows access, but it also goes offline from time to time. And uh, what's happening is that bugs are being worked out of the system as the results come in. So uh, families filling out the FAFSA when it goes offline will still be able to continue working. It won't kick you out. Uh, and it will save your entered information. So if you do need to log out, you can pick up where you left off without losing any of your progress. Um, because of the late start and the ongoing adjustments, it be February or March before FAFSA results are received by student financial services and the packaging process can begin. And every school in the nation is facing these delays right now. Um, and, and at the same time, we know that families need information for planning purposes, uh, which is why we have our net price calculator. And uh, if you go to, um, excuse me here, I just, Okay, so you'll need to go to uh, actually wallawalla.edu forward slash calculator, wallawalla.edu forward slash calculator. And what I'm going to do right now is a uh, screen share and I will just demonstrate how the calculator is used. It's super easy. So uh, here we go. Okay, you should be able to see the net price calculator as I'm screen sharing. Are you seeing that, Trevor? I am not yet, so it's not come across. Uh, maybe okay. it's coming through now. Okay, now I can see it. Okay, uh, so we have the net price calculator, and if you've gone to um, to the site that I shared with you, wallawalla.edu forward slash calculator, you'll be able to see the same thing, and you can actually enter your information on this, but I'll just illustrate right now. So uh, here we have the net price calculator. I'm going to just continue as a guest here and click this button. And you can see some of the preliminary questions uh, to ask. So we'll say um, a female student residing in Washington, and I'll enter uh, the college place zip code, 99324. And of course, you'll enter your home zip code. Uh, we're going to assume that this is a student who is um, a dependent. So uh, for FAFSA purposes, that's going to be a student, anybody who's below 24 years of age. Even if the student is living on their own and paying their living expenses, the government's going to consider 24 or younger um, as the family's still uh, being responsible for educational purposes. Uh, over here, we'll put in unweighted GPA and I'll enter a 3.75 GPA. Um, right now, I will put in no for the college entrance exams, but you may have exam uh, scores that you can put in. We'll assume uh, down here that the student's living on campus, four people in the, the family, and married parents with two working. Uh, we're going to say that this student is a first-time freshman. This is a student who's not attended another college or university after graduating from high school. Uh, earning credit during high school is fair game. That's okay. So uh, we're not a transfer student. Uh, I'm going to put no for the National Merit Scholarship, but how about we'll say junior class executive VP and maybe some outstanding community and church leadership. Okay, now coming down here, if you have started on the FAFSA and you know what your SAI is, you can put that information in here. Uh, for now, we'll just assume limited family and financial data, but you can uh, see that there are different options here. So if you have more uh, detailed data that you want to enter, uh, you do have that option. You can just check that. And we're going to assume both parents working and maybe a family income of, let's say, about 60000 and maybe a little bit in the savings count. And a student may be working and they may have some assets too, maybe some earnings. And I'll just put zero here. Now on this one, uh, I'm going to select estimate for me. 
And so this right here, you can see that this is giving an estimated student aid index. This would be um, the this would be used for calculating a financial aid eligibility and family contribution amount according to the government. Uh, just to expedite things, I'm going to click on Do Not Share Information and click Submit. So you can see the estimator working there. And let's just scroll back up here. So here we have a rough estimate. And do keep in mind that these um, are not, uh, this is to help you plan, but there may be other factors that need to be taken into consideration. Um, so we have a rough estimate to give you an idea. So we start out up here, we've got estimated costs for the school year, tuition, living expenses, uh, travel expenses, personal expenses, and all of this is in here for planning purposes. Uh, some of these may not be as much as estimated, but we would rather have, uh, you know, every factor that could possibly come up. And scrolling down here, you can see, see some estimates for financial aid. So Pell Grant, uh, this would be a need-based grant, Washington State Need, Achievement Scholarship based on the GPA that was entered earlier, and Leadership Award based on uh, high school activities, and then a Walla Walla U grant. So here we're looking at what a family would need to cover out of pocket without using student loans. But if you scroll down a little bit, loans are available to students. This would be a standard amount for a freshman who was attending. So actually this little number right here, if a student um, decided to use student loans, this would be closer to what a student, uh, what the family would actually need to cover during the school year. And of course, if you look down here, it says other options. So you can always talk with financial services about your individual circumstances. Maybe there uh, have been changes um, in your financial situation um, in the past two years. The FAFSA is going to look at your income from two years ago, but a lot of things a lot of things can change in that time. Uh, this is not taking into account uh, student work, student contributions that they might make toward um, their costs and so forth, VA benefits. So there might be other types of financial aid that we could put in place, but this will give you a good starting point. And then of course over here, you can look at some com comparison with uh, some other schools. So um, it's pretty straightforward to use. Uh, and then, of course, down here, if you need some definition of terms, maybe they're unfamiliar, you can see those. And if you want to print this off, you can also download a, P excuse me, download a PDF and you can save those results. And then, of course, we're here to help you. Um, if it's not a realistic estimate for you, we want to make sure that a Walla Walla University education is affordable for um for you as a student and for your family. And so um, that's why I'm here, give me a call. So I hope that's helpful to you. If you have questions uh, just using the estimator, um, feel free to give us a call. So uh, with tra that, Trevor, I am gonna turn this back over to you. Perfect, thanks for that, Carrie. I know it was really helpful to kind of walk through how the calculator works, especially with that delay in getting the FAFSAs in and the financial aid packaging for that stuff. Um, I don't remember if you mentioned this already, but if uh, you are an international student, you're a Canadian student, uh, you can't fill out the FAFSA anyway. And so you actually can go ahead and get in your financial aid stuff now and we can start packaging it. Just make sure that your students admitted before that. Um, but we can, we're processing those right now, aren't we? Or close to it maybe? Yes, uh, no, no delays with that. So yes, if you're international, if you're Canadian, communicate with us. We want to get information. We want to get a financial package to you as quickly as possible. Perfect. Um, okay, before we jump into the question and answer period, I wanted to mention that WVU has a number of initiatives to make college even more affordable for students. Uh, these initiatives are designated for specific types of students. Um, for instance, we've got a special Canadian scholarship to help offset the um, the dollar value that's happening right now with the Canadian dollar being a little bit weaker than the US dollar. Um, we've got scholarships for DACA students, uh, scholarships for international students um, as well. So if you think you might qualify for one of these, please be sure to reach out to us and we can talk with you in more detail about them. Um, the good news is that a lot of those ones will happen automatically um, through the admissions and acceptance process, as well as through the process um, of submitting some of your financial aid paperwork. So uh, it's a good time to start that process. Um, Carrie, did you have uh, something about the FAFSA you want to talk about? Oh, 
Uh oh, I think you're uh, muted. Like I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Uh, yeah, with regard to the FAFSA, uh, really the, the main thing is just to realize that they are going through the soft launch. Um, so sometimes the FAFSA isn't always accessible, but do keep trying. Uh, we are dealing with the delays uh, with the results. Um, if you need assistance with the FAFSA, if you have questions about how to fill it out, um, you know, you're always welcome to give us a call. We're happy to assist you. Um, okay, uh, let's go ahead and start uh, answering some of the questions that have been submitted. Um, feel free to continue to ask your questions. I've seen a number of them coming through. We're going to get to them. Um, but even as we're talking, feel free to submit them uh, if there's something that like you didn't feel like we covered yet because we're about at that point. Um, okay, let's go to the first question. The first question is, Carrie, can a student apply for financial aid before they have been accepted? Yes, a student can apply for financial aid. Now, we won't process that financial aid until after we've gotten um, the acceptance. Um, so basically, we'll get your information. We will have that on file. So as soon as we do get confirmation of the student's acceptance, we can start processing uh, financial aid as quickly as possible. Great. Um, next question is, how likely am I to receive financial aid? Is it worth going through the application process? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, over 90% of Walla Walla U uh, students qualify for financial aid. And as I mentioned last year, uh, we awarded over 41 million in student aid, and that comes out to an average of 28,000 per student. So it's always good to check and see. That sounds like it for sure. Um, uh, next question is, how can a student apply for admission? Do they need to wait until the middle of their senior year of high school? I'll take that one since I work really closely in admissions with the director and uh, with recruitment. Uh, so we actually will accept students based on as early as their sixth semester transcript from high school. So as long as a student has completed their junior year, they're eligible to apply for admission. Uh, doing this early definitely has an advantage. So let's say you've got a great GPA in that sixth semester transcript um, and you apply to us and you get admitted, we'll actually lock in your merit award at that level. So let's say you take a lot of hard classes your senior year and maybe your GPA slides you down to a lower category. Um, if you were to apply and get admitted at that point, we would have awarded you at that lower level. Um, but because we locked it in early because you applied, you know, early into your senior year, uh, that is the one that we will leave you at. Because once we've awarded that high amount, we're not going to uh, take it away from you. So definitely need your advantage to apply for admission as soon as you're eligible, which most of you should be eligible that we're talking to now because you should have completed your uh, junior year. Um, okay. Let's see, another one is, Carrie, once a student's financial aid package has been awarded, how do you notify the student? We'll send out an award letter, and with that award letter, we'll include a personalized financial plan. This reflects our best estimate of your expenses on campus, as well as all the types of financial aid that you um, will receive. And it'll look really similar to what you saw with the estimator there. Uh, your estimated payments will show on the financial plan, and our, finan our payment plans are really pretty simple. Uh, we take your costs, subtract your financial aid, and then we'll divide that into three payments equal payments during the quarter. Uh, the first payment is due the Wednesday before the start of classes, and then the next two payments follow about a month apart. And when you begin the next quarter, um, you'll pay anything remaining for the previous quarter plus the down payment for the new quarter. And again, uh, financial clearance, that first payment is due the Wednesday before the start of classes. Great. Thanks for that, Carrie. Um, here's another question. If a student starts at WRU, then goes to another school, do they still get their scholarship if they decide to return? If they go somewhere else in the summer, that's okay. But if they go to another school, even for one credit other than during the summer, they lose their scholarship because we want them to come here as freshmen and stay the entire four years with us. Okay, a follow up to that question. So if they start at WVU, then go to another school for several uh, quarters or semesters and then transfer back, can they have the transfer scholarship since they lost their freshman scholarship? No, because uh, they'd be considered a returning student, not a transfer student. So they've lost all, they've lost their eligibility for scholarships. They can still apply for need-based financial aid, but they don't get their Walla Walla U scholarships back. And some of those ones can be pretty significant uh, mm -hmm. for the merit awards and even the transfer scholarships um, can be pretty high. So it's worth coming and staying. Uh, that's what we're trying to, I think, help incentivize for sure. Um, another question, looks like this is from a parent. 
Uh, it says, a friend of mine is a student at WWU, but they said they can't see their students' grades even though they pay the bill. Is that correct? That is right, and that's actually federal law. Um, as soon as a student starts college, the student has total control over who gets their statement, who knows their grades, and of course, parents, you still have leverage. You can choose not to pay the down payment for the next quarter until your student shows you their grades, but you'll have to work out that agreement with your student. Um, all right, uh, let's see, I've got another question, and apologies, see me keep covering my mouth. I've had this persistent cough since like Christmas and New Year's, and it has not gone away. It's absolutely horrible, so I'm trying to contain it and mute it when it's coming, so I'll do my best as we're continuing to talk to try to make sure I, I don't do it on where everybody can hear it. Um, okay, uh, next question is, um, hi, we are Canadian citizens. Are we allowed to apply for the FAFSA? If your student has dual citizenship and they are also U.S. citizens, yes, you, the student could fill out the FAFSA. Otherwise, no, uh, Canadian students cannot fill out the FAFSA. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, though, there's some pretty good uh, additional scholarships that we have for Canadian students because we realize, um, you know, your dollar doesn't stretch as far in the U.S. Uh, currency right now. Um, I think that one, if I remember right, is an extra additional 8000 on top of whatever merit awards the student is eligible for. And so um, there's there's quite a ways that we try to make it affordable for Canadian citizens. So don't don't d be deterred by your inability to fill out FAFSA because uh, the financial team would love to have a crack at it to try to help you figure out how to make it affordable. Um, next question is: Can international students apply for loans? There are um, it, loans aren't generally easily accessible to international students. There may be some out there. Um, you would need to uh, probably just do a search on that, but I don't see uh, most of the time international students have access to uh, loans in the U.S. Would that be something that maybe they could work with in their home country to see if they can get some kind of a loan uh, at home through their parents and stuff to see if that might be something they can use towards their school bill? That probably is a good possibility. It is. Um, now, Canadian students, I do know that Canadian students can apply for Canadian student loans that can be used in the, the U.S. Uh, from other countries, um, I've not seen that, but it is worth looking at. It's worth investigating. Great. Um, okay, next question. How can we schedule a meeting with the financial um, aid office, and how do we find out um, who we would uh, want to, or like who we'd meet with? Uh, it's uh, really, you can just give us a call. Our phone number is, uh, let's see, you can see it up there on the screen, 800-656-2815. Uh, give us a call. You're welcome to schedule an appointment. Uh, oftentimes, we can just take your, your call, um, you know, at the moment. So you're free to call us at your convenience. Uh, as far as who you would talk with, um, it's very likely that you'll talk with me. But if you have more specific questions, if you had more specific uh, questions about details about loans, I would uh, get you in touch with somebody in the loans department. Um, but most likely, you'll start out with me. Hi. <laughs> and you've already, you already had know what she looks like and who she is. So yeah. That's a good way. <laughs> Um, the other thing, I'll do a plug here for um, uh, campus visits, whether that is virtual visits or whether that's in person. Um, if you've got some free time during uh, normal business hours during the week, uh, which is 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and then 8 to noon on Friday, um, if you register for that, you say you'd like to meet with Student Financial Services, maybe some departments, get a tour of campus, we can do all that virtually and set all that up for you so that you can maybe meet with uh, Carrie or other financial aid counselor um, through Microsoft Teams, we get a chance to chat um, and get all your questions answered. So that's another opportunity too. Or if you don't have that much time, you know, you can always give them a call and, the, and set up an appointment for sure. Um, okay, let's see. Next question is, uh, this was when I was talking about all the different dates that were coming up. Um, the question was, do these dates apply for the Summer Portland Campus Nursing Start? That is a great question. And no, they do not. <laughs> um, Portland, if you're headed to Portland Nursing Campus this summer, um, the dates are going to be different. The ones I was talking about is mostly related to um, our incoming uh, student classes in the fall. Um, so if you are thinking about going to Portland, um, we just put up a great new resource. If you go to wallawalla.edu forward slash Portland, um, there's a great new website that's there that's got like kind of how you go about that process. They have specific deadlines for when you need to get your applications in, when they will make their decisions for which students are admitted to the program. 
um, as well as, if I'm remembering right, Carrie, and correct me, uh, nursing students don't pay an enrollment fee. They have like a housing deposit, I think, that they pay, which takes the place of the enrollment fee. So it's going to be a little bit different process than what I talked about for Portland Nursing, um, but you want to make sure you familiarize yourself with that. So again, that's wallawalla.edu forward slash Portland um, that you'll want to check out and work with their advisors and they can help walk you through the process for sure. Um, next question is, how long does it take to receive an admissions offer? So I'll answer that one. Um, that actually right now, we're pretty caught up with the um, admissions decisions that are coming in. As long as we have a completed application from you that you've submitted, you can do it online. It is free at wallawalla.edu forward slash apply. Um, and then you have given us a transcript. So if you are a uh, incoming freshman, only have done high school, we'll need that most recent transcript from you at least six semesters um, that we can work with to make an admissions decision. Um, and then uh, if we get that one, you can send it to us virtually. Um, you can either upload it through your enrollment portal or uh, you can email transcripts at wallawalla.edu. Um, and then we'll get those, combine them. And usually I'd say the turnaround process for that is like three to four days probably. If you're an international student, it's a little bit more complicated because depending on where you're coming from, if it's not the US style of educational system, you may have to get your transcripts um, uh, uh, reviewed by a transcripting service, an international transcripting service. That way we'll know uh, what we're looking at in terms of what kind of scholarships you should get based upon a uh, 4.0, uh, or not 4.0, but the 4.0 grade scale. So a little bit, might be a little bit longer, but if we have everything in that we need, the turnaround time is pretty quick for an admissions decision. Um, next question is, um, uh, let's see. I hold HND in purchasing and supply with CGPA 2.0, so cumulative GPA of 2.85, can I apply for admission and scholarship? Um, if if it, your cumulative GPA is a 2.85, um, you would be able to apply. And if it stays at that, you would be admitted because in order for us to have a new freshman, you have to have at least a 2.5 cumulative GPA. Um, and then our merit awards are based upon starting at a 3.0 cumulative GPA or certain levels if you score high enough on the ACT or SAT test scores. Um, so right now, just based upon the information you share, it doesn't sound like you're at the merit award level, um, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't still get to that maybe by the end of your uh, senior year, or um, if you scored high enough on that ACT or SAT tests, you might be able to reach one. Um, let's see, uh, next question is, can you get a scholarship from anywhere else and use it at Walla Walla? It's a great question, Carrie, you wanna tackle that one? Okay, if, uh, if you're getting a scholarship from a different university, if you've been offered that, most likely you will only be able to use it there and not at Walla Walla. But if you're getting what we call an outside scholarship, maybe um, maybe there's a foundation, maybe there's, um, uh, you know, uh, maybe you've gotten a, a scholarship from the Lions Club, um, you know, you should, some scholarships you'll be able to use almost anywhere that you go. Um, but again, if it is a scholarship that's coming specifically from an institution, they're probably going to want you to use that scholarship at their institution. Great, thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uh, another question is, um, I'm a pastor of our church here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. What's the process of our financial aid from the conference? So it sounds like they're probably subsidy recipients, which I will add that changes a little bit how that $8,000 scholarship works. I don't believe you're eligible for that one with subsidy, but Carrie, uh, please uh, go through that process for them. Uh, the important thing would be to um, just make sure that we have um, the information uh, for billing that subsidy. Uh, when you fill out uh, financial aid applications, um, for Walla Walla U, basically there's the FAFSA and then there's an institutional application, the uh, undergraduate financial aid application, and that's a good place where you can uh, submit that information and we can get that included with your financial plan. Great. Okay, another question is, um, I just submitted the application. Can I now work on the FAFSA application and submit it before being uh, accepted? I think you mentioned that a little bit earlier. That, yes. Um, they can fill that out and they can submit the financial aid paperwork, um, but they'll hold it until you're, financial, until you're admitted as a student to the university. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll start working on it. But like Carrie said, you know, if you're a US student submitting a FAFSA, might be a little bit delayed, um, even if you are admitted. So waiting on some of those uh, computer programmers to get that stuff done and it, it's a new process for sure. 
Um, let's see. Next question is, um, I think I understand what this one is. It's asking if before I submit my application, uh, should I show it to my counselor first? So I'm get, assuming you're talking about like a school counselor. Uh, maybe that's helping you with like applying for colleges. Um, you know, you can feel free to do that. You don't have to have them look at it. We don't require that before you submit your application to Walla Walla. Um, you can do that at home with your family. If there's something that you have questions about, you can always call us or, you know, feel free to tap your school if you have questions, because I'm sure they're used to answering a ton of them uh, from students that are applying for school. But I wouldn't say it's a super complicated process for applying. It just takes a little bit of time because there's quite a bit of information that we're asking for, because we need to make sure we understand kind of your situation, where you're coming from and, and what your interests are as a student. Um, uh, the question is, does Walla Walla offer the program best of both worlds? I'm trying to remember what that program is. Um, do you know what that program is? Have you heard of that, Carrie? That one doesn't ring a bell for me, but that doesn't mean we can't learn about something about something new. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'll try to look it up. Maybe I'll ask you another question and I'll try to look it up. Um, do students at Walla Walla get a scholarship if someone uh, they know they convince um, to attend, like if a friend convinces them to come to Walla Walla? So like, I guess kind of like a headhunter um, scholarship. Uh, we don't have a scholarship for that, but I like the idea. All right. I did not have enough time to look that up yet, so um, <laughs> I'll, I'll continue to try. Let's see another one. Um, is it true you guys honor the higher GPA even if it drops a little bit? Um, so that's about the scholarshiping. Um, yes, we will do that. Um, once you've locked in your scholarship, it can only go up. It cannot go down. The only way it would go down is if you know you didn't graduate high school <laughs> at the end of the year. Uh, you have to have graduated in order to attend. So if you didn't do that, obviously we can't give you a scholarship. Um, so that would be like one of the only ways, which I'm not assuming that's gonna happen for any of you on this uh, presentation. Um, let's see, another one is, do we need to do a SAT um, in order to attend Walla Walla or the ACT? No, it is not required, um, but if you've done one and uh, you reach like those different thresholds that might, be a higher scholarship, I definitely encourage you to submit it. And actually, you know, if you're not sure yet where you're going for a college in the fall, um, we hope you come to Walla, but if you're like, oh, you're in my top running, I would recommend that you take an ACT or SAT sometime your senior year, because there are some colleges that do require that in order uh, for them to make the admissions decision. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at, just because Walla Walla doesn't require it, doesn't mean that others uh, do not. I think quite a few of them don't require it now since COVID, um, but, uh, just check with the schools that you're most interested in. Well, and Trevor, something I'd like to add is uh, if you're a student who maybe doesn't have a GPA that quite comes up to the 3.0, um, there are some students who just get more serious about their academics later on. Yeah. And I have seen students, you know, study up for the ACT, take yeah. it and just knock it out of the park and they get the full, you know, get the biggest scholarship available. I see it happen. Yep. So go for it. It definitely, it definitely does that. I've seen that too, uh, which there's something about like, okay, I'm waking up and I'm ready to crack those books and get some practice done, you know, and you can take the ACTRSAT multiple times and we'll take whatever's highest. So um, it, it might be worth that if you don't think that you'll be able to make it above that 3.0. Um, I'd recommend too, like I usually will tell students, um, if you're that close, like a 285, and that was the end of your junior year, you've got a whole nother year of academics that could pull that up. And so it's worth going and talking to like your registrar at your school um, to find out, hey, what kind of grades would I need to pull that up to a 3.0? Um, that, that might be worthwhile as well. So just some additional little uh, helpful pieces of information that might be helpful. Um, let's see, uh, another question is, um, I've applied for admission, I've attached my transfer, but have not heard from the admission team for the past two weeks. Um, I don't know for sure what that is. I like. I'll give you my email address. This is Trevor, T-R-E-V-O-R, at wallawalla.edu. Again, just T-R-E-V-O-R at wallawalla.edu. Shoot me an email with uh, your full name, and I'm happy to uh, look at that and try to see where your application is, because I'm not sure without knowing that information about what's happening, but I will for sure get back to you. Um, okay, uh, I did not have time to finish looking up that best of both worlds thing. Um, let me see. I tried searching the website, so I'm not sure what it is. I, it, we probably don't have the same thing, 
Um, usually, most of the individual scholarships that colleges give that are uh, like specifically different than like merit and things like that are usually pretty unique to that individual college. Um, some of them might be somewhat similar, um, but generally they are going to be different. We likely have it if we have anything that's kind of equivalent, it would be under a different name. So without knowing more information about it, I can't really answer if that's something that Walla Walla has. Um, yeah, uh, oh, Trevor, yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, Jennifer Boyko, who you've not met yet, she's helping run stuff behind the scenes for this presentation. She just messaged and said that um, it's like our old home-based program, which is where a student would come and like live in our residence hall, but then attend classes at like the community college um, that were for classes that like for majors that we did not offer. So things like, um, what is it? I think they're, what is it like farming and like, you know, some turf management. And uh, I think they had like a fire science program and different things like that. Um, so we used to have a program like that. We do not have that any longer. We didn't see a lot of students that came through that program. And so over the years, it kind of got phased out because there wasn't enough interest. So uh, we were spending some time and resources on it. And we're like, oh, if we don't have students coming, can't keep that continuing. So great. Thank you for passing that along, Jennifer. I could not find that fast enough. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, need my email address again. It's Trevor, T-R-E-V-O-R, at wallawalla.edu. Um, and actually, I'll just type it into everybody so you can have it if you need it as well. Okay, um, that looks like that brings us to the end of the Q&A. Um, I just want to uh, have a couple of big thank yous um, uh, that I want to shout out. So a uh, big thank you to Mindy and to Carrie and to Jennifer behind the scenes for their work on this, um, as well as a big thank you uh, to all of you that attended this presentation this evening. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. You asked some great questions. Um, we really appreciated it. Um, oh, there was one more question I forgot that somebody had asked. They uh, had just joined us and asked about if they could come to another presentation. We will have another presentation this evening at seven to eight o'clock. Um, that's gonna be Pacific Standard Time. Uh, you can go and sign up for that one. Should have been in the link that like we sent out an email and tried to this afternoon. Um, so feel free to sign up for that one if you'd like to attend. Um, we also will be doing another one of these in about a month, like right in February, I think we've got one more we'll do. Um, and uh, we also ha will uh, have a recording of this available as well. Um, so you can go and see them. Uh, so glad I remember that before I, I totally got out. Um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you found this presentation helpful and that you feel more prepared to take the next steps towards your college adventure. Uh, we'd love to have you at Wall University. And if a Wall University education is God's plan for your life, we'll do everything we can to make it work for you. You have our promise and our prayers. Um, we'd also love to have your feedback about today's presentation. When we sign off, please take a moment to take a brief survey at wallawalla.edu forward slash comment. Man, I'm throwing out those URLs all over the place. <laughs> um, again, that's wallawalla.edu forward slash comment. Um, there's a link that uh, just got posted. Uh, we'd really like to know what was helpful and if there's things that you thought can make this presentation better next time. Uh, we do read all of them, so it's actually really helpful for us. Um, if you think of something you forgot to ask, you can always give us a call at that phone number, 800-541-8900, or email us at info at wallawalla.edu, or you can email me as well. I uh, look forward to you guys uh, being a part of our family uh, for next fall quarter, or maybe summer if you're going to Portland. Um, hope you have a wonderful night. Take care.